I'm excited to be here to uh, talk about Multiray, our platform for deploying high quality large language models across many classification tasks at Meta. As background, the motivation for building Multiray was to bring large language models and at the time in particular XLMR, uh, the cross-lingual uh, Mo uh, language model based on Roberta uh, to a broad set of classification tasks and achieve uh, much better uh, classification performance uh, than uh, you could do with uh, models that uh, were being deployed at the time. This is important for Meta because content classification drives many of our application decisions from recommending particular posts, assembling the feed, uh, to blocking materials, a material that's considered uh, objectionable because it involves terrorism, trafficking, domestic violence, bullying, et cetera. Uh, so getting better uh, classifications has a real impact on the quality of the service and uh, the um, safety uh, that we can offer to our users. Um, so, the obvious answer to improving uh, the speed of uh, evaluation of these models is to use accelerators because uh, CPUs have an excessive evaluation time. Depending on how we optimized uh, the settings, we saw uh, between one and 10 seconds of inference uh, latency uh, for these large language models uh, used for classification. And uh, accelerators can help with that, but accelerators are also expensive in terms of power footprint, in terms of uh, how many accelerators you can fit in a data center. And uh, there is only uh, consequently a very limited capacity. So. Uh, building specialized models uh, for each uh, inference task uh, is costly because uh, the cost uh, scales with cost per inference times the number of posts or other content that you're processing plus the number of tasks uh, that you want to run on that post. So at the same time, we saw that uh, the quality of large language models was getting uh, much better every day um, at uh, the price of uh, ever increasing uh, model sizes and uh, compute cost. So uh, there, there was uh, distinctly an opportunity here uh, to improve uh, the performance, uh, the classification performance and grow with uh, the quality of large language models if we can uh, make uh, the large language models uh, portable uh, for this application space. We faced a simple dilemma. On the one hand, we ha can have better, larger models, but on the other hand, to scale this up to the size that uh, we have at Meta with uh, billions of, uh, of users um, that uh, puts a considerable strain on whatever resources you might deploy. The traditional outcome that companies have done in the past is they deploy lower complexity models with a concomitant uh, lower classification quality because uh, scaling uh, these expensive models at uh, billions of queries per day is practically unaffordable. Our aim was to provide the best models at scale while making the deployment uh, viable in terms of uh, data center footprint, in terms of power, in terms of sustainability. So as we were looking at the space, um, if you look at uh, how fine tuning is oftentimes done, um, you can observe that uh, the fine tuning uh, primarily affects the last few layers and uh, the earlier layers are, uh, in, a, in a neural network are typically a function of the inputs uh, in, in, to a large extent. So the question is, how can we reuse that work 
for different tasks. And uh, the answer that we turn to is to use embeddings. Embeddings are a snapshot of uh, the neural network activations at a particular point in uh, the neural network. Uh, and those can be saved. They can be shared across multiple tasks and then uh, have uh, specialized classifiers. Think of that as the last few layers in a fine-tuned network. So this gives us the ability to do content analysis on the input, to compute an embedding, to save and, uh, the embedding and reuse the embedding across multiple classifi uh, classifiers. We can handle uh, different media, text, images, video, uh, because increasingly uh, the content uh, that we encounter is multimodal. We output an embedding that captures the relationship uh, between the input elements, the semantic content of the input elements, and uh, then save that as an embedding that powers the decision of much simpler downstream models. Uh, there are two significant uh, parts uh, to our solution. The first one is caching. We cached embeddings because uh, cache access is 10x cheaper than recompute in terms of latency, in term, at least 10x uh, cheaper than recompute in terms of, ten, of uh, latency, but also in terms of uh, power dissipation and uh, overall system cost. We use multi-level caching so we can create the storage cost uh, versus latency with uh, memcached and flash memory, et cetera, uh, creating a multi-level um, uh, caching hierarchy uh, that optimizes for uh, both uh, fast turnaround time on frequently accessed embeddings as well as uh, uh, storing many of them to avoid recompute. And then we use a smart replacement algorithm where we actually track what it costs to compute uh, an embedding. And uh, we predict how likely it is that the embedding uh, will be reused. So uh, that also powers our cash replacement algorithm. A embedding that is less likely to be reused is retained uh, for a shorter period in the cache. Uh, and similarly, and when uh, replacement uh, in the cache is to occur, uh, it's advantageous to replace uh, embeddings that have a lower uh, cost of recompute in case uh, the embedding is later ac is accessed again at a later time. Um, we also use accelerators, and uh, using the caching scheme as a filter uh, makes uh, using accelerators at scale affordable because uh, less than 10% of the queries uh, that uh, are sent uh, to the embedding service actually end up needing rec uh, computation, end up being evaluated on the accelerator. So the accelerators allow us to, mo uh, to meet uh, latency goals of uh, returning a classification within a fairly short uh, time window. It also allows us to uh, compute uh, those results efficiently, sustainably, um, with uh, the lowest uh, power comp uh, dissipation. And um, we use batching uh, on, uh, in uh, the service. So while we receive individual requests from the end users, we create batches on the fly to get higher efficiency out of uh, the individual inference processing steps. Um, finally, by sharing the embeddings across many tasks, we can amortize the cost of using accelerators across many teams and uh, many different models. This is a high-level system diagram of the multi-ray service. The idea here is uh, to have very simple interfaces. You might think of it as Boring on the outside, magical inside will just give you an understanding of uh, the content that uh, you want to classify. Um, this architecture 
exposes fewer moving pieces to the end users. All requests uh, go through a coordination service that's accessed through a remote procedure call interface. And uh, we minimize uh, the amount of configurations by uh, having self-describing uh, responses. So when a response with an embedding comes, it also includes uh, the uh, quantization scheme that was used. We use quantization to uh, reduce the footprint of these embeddings. Uh, and uh, the result is uh, completely self-describing. Also, the service uh, does all the data pre-processing uh, necessary as part of the model that includes tokenization of text, that includes privacy enforcement and other systemic uh, operations to uh, ensure a compliant, high quality service. Uh, in summary, we find simple systems scale better. Uh, we have a large number of users uh, that uh, all drive their own decisions off uh, for for their classification uh, needs of the embedding. Um, advantageously, by having a simple centralized uh, model, uh, we can uh, optimize that model. We can optimize the service, and all the users will immediately benefit uh, from uh, improvements that we can make in the multi-ray service. So we have a single control point to enable new capabilities. Some examples include um, we've used multiple generations of accelerators. Uh, we started out with uh, dedicated ASIC accelerators. Uh, we deployed the first uh, GPU inference uh, instances at Meta in this service. Uh, this was also the first uh, deployment of accelerated transformers. And uh, over the lifetime of multi-ray, which has now been in service uh, for several years, uh, the uh, machine learning engineers have uh, developed improved training techniques for embeddings that have led to um, significant improvements of embedding quality and classification outcomes. Uh, in conclusion, uh, multi-ray makes large mo models affordable at scale. We have over 125 use cases across Meta. Uh, we serve about 20 million queries per second uh, with a total of over 800 billion queries per day. Um, it was the first instance of adopting accelerators in production at Meta and it's a service that continues to power a uh, broad uh, cross-section of uh, our application experiences uh, in uh, the Facebook app, uh, Instagram, and other uh, Facebook uh, services. So this concludes my talk, and I'll be happy to take any questions at this point. Right. Uh, we actually use XLMR and uh, its uh, successors, which are encoder-based models. Uh, this was just projecting out general growth in the LLMs, and uh, you know that you end up getting better quality, uh, but also significantly bigger challenges in production to deploy these larger models. So today we are using encoder models. Uh, at and uh, to, to your point here.